there's no laws when you're drinking claws and tonight we're gonna commit embezzlement it is 11 38 ooh nighttime and i've just decided to embark upon a journey so what i'm going to do this week is reading like mr harry styles so let's just talk about harry styles a little bit i love one direction i have loved one direction since i was 10 and harry's the best one <laughs> i'm gonna get hate and that's fair i'm just saying there was a reason that louis and niles mics were turned down by management when they are performing in concert i can't just get canceled but harry is king harry is the best harry is a dream i have fantasies in which you know like i'm reading one of these books that I, i've picked from this list and he were like in a cafe and he walks up to me and he's like oh i like that book and then I'm like, oh yeah, I have thoughts and opinions about it because I'm reading it. And then he's like, I'm Harry. And I'm like, Henry? Because I don't want him to know that I know who he is. So he's like, no, Harry. And I'm like, oh, Henry? And he's like, no, it's Harry. It's Harry Styles. And I'm like, who? Oh, but it's Harry. Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm Carly. And then he's like, wow, she's different. She's not like other girls. She like reads books and doesn't know who I am. Cue montage. This is what I wore to see One Direction, um, it's crazy that I was like, oh, um, this outfit will get me picked out of the crowd. Like, they'll see me in the crowd. Bring me backstage, not get to hang out with the guys. You know, sure, they're 20, 22 at this point, and I'm 14. So if they did bring me backstage, it would honestly be a crime, but I think it's gonna happen. So the first book, My Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. I found this because the Strand bookstore in New York City posted on Instagram that he came there. Like, they took a picture with him, being like, ah, Harry Styles came. And then somebody was like, what did he buy? And he bought the Marie Kondo book. The other book that he bought was Joan Didion's My Year of Magical Thinking, which is basically a memoir in which she details her life the year after her husband dies. And I'm really excited to read this. I've read Didion... Um, I had a class last year all about like autobiographical authors and I had to read her and I loved Joan Didion so much and I haven't read this book um, because it's really sad apparently <laughs> and I, you know, life is already so sad and um, every once in a while I already get paralyzed by my mental illness and the fear that life is only pain. So like, why would I welcome that into my life more? with literature so i am excited to read it even though i'm like will this <laughs> will this trigger a spiral episode um in which i realize i should never fall in love because it's just gonna end the second book i'm reading i found this is the one that like whenever you look up like what books does harry styles read it's like always up there it's apparently his favorite norwegian wood which is like that Beatles song. I'm wondering, I think this is like a love story where a guy like falls in love with a girl and she's <laughs> mentally ill. So obviously Harry Styles has a little bit of maybe a savior complex. And the third book I'm reading, I don't know the exact name of it. I think it's like a collection of poems by Charles Bukowski. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm excited to read this because I love poetry. love to read some poetry. And this I found out just because like Harry Styles will constantly tweet like little Bukowski quotes and stuff like that. So I just got the collection of Bukowski poems that my library has. And, you know, he tweets little excerpts from a lot of different ones. So I think it'll still be relevant. I'm excited to read this because I've heard a lot about Charles Bukowski in like that kind of like douchey lit bro kind of way. I'm like concerned because I'm always kind of like... What is like I'm a white man? Is he white? <laughs> oh yeah, he's, oh, he's white. But like, what does like a white man like have to say <laughs> nowadays? You know, it's like, it's been done. You know, like, be, I'm angry. I'm a man. Er, I get it. I've, I've read it. I've seen it. Like, what do you have to offer? In terms of like poetry, I'm like, poetry is not like really for white men. Maybe he'll become my favorite white man poet. Well, actually Walt Whitman, but Walt Whitman was gay, so he gets a pass to write poetry, but place the holds tonight on my library, and I'll take you along for the ride. We'll do a little, like, unboxing, but until then, ciao. Hello. 
Welcome to Canada in the fall. Okay, I just got a notification. Beautiful pink umbrella in the background. Um, okay, let's go. Um, hi, I look much better now. I mean, my hair is still a little ratty, but that's life. I read the first hundred pages of Norwegian Wood, took a shower. I did a self-tape for a hand soap commercial in which I really gave my all as an actress and honestly nailed it. And I'm sure I won't book it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go to class. I'm enjoying Norwegian Wood a lot. Like I said before, it is less narrative. It's more so just following this main character um, as he goes to university in Tokyo and the people he meets. And the writing is really lyrical, really poignant. It's like kind of like John Green for adults in which like there's just like lines written basically to that are meant to be Tumblr tattoos. But I will say one thing about our good friend Murakami, very talented writer. He loves to talk about boobs. He'll just be like, I walked by a woman on the street, her boobs were perky or something. And you're like, we get it, you're horny. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, so last night i finished norwegian wood by murakami and i usually love a book where nothing happens like all i want to do is like a catcher in the rye type of moment where like truly nothing happens <laughs> and it's just somebody being depressed and that is what norwegian wood is it was really good i can't i don't want to i don't know how much i want to say i'm going to share my thoughts at the end but now i'm moving on to my year of magical thinking. I read the first 30 pages last night. It's really good. It's, if I thought Norwegian Wood was gonna be sad, this is, this is gonna be incredibly sad. So what's really interesting is this is a library book, obviously, but like, I don't know if you can see this. Someone has annotated it. I've never seen a library book annotated before. So it's very cool to like, see what parts of this book someone else thought were really interesting. This, the whole design of this book is actually incredibly beautiful. Like, look at that. The typeface is gorgeous. I don't know how much I'm gonna get to read today. I have a big project due at 4 p.m. Basically where I had to format an entire book of Aesop's fables. I fucking, I love her so much, I, and I'm really enjoying this book. It's fucking killing me. It's incredibly sad and definitely not the vibe right now. It's crazy that this could happen to a person, you know? Like, your husband be like dead, your daughter be like brain bleeding in the hospital. I'm getting there. We're getting close to the end. Bad day. Like good day, but bad day. I don't know why, I just feel like I'm, I've forgotten to do something. And I don't know what it is. That's what I'm doing, but I think I'm gonna finish this tonight. Knock out some Charles Bukowski poetry tomorrow. I'm gonna eat this clementine while I talk to you about 
A Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion, which I finished last night. I was very happy to finish it because it was kind of a slow read. It's really short, really readable, but like a lot, you know? I was never like excited to read it, not because it wasn't good, but just because I'm not like, oh, you know what I want to do now? Read about a woman absolutely fucked by her husband's sudden death. <laughs> It's just a lot. I haven't been keeping up much in the personal life of Mr. Harry Styles. These two books he's picked are pretty fucking sad. Oh, my bun is, my clip has turned into a ponytail. That's ugly. But I do see that connection in both of these books that I've read so far, and I'm sure poet Charles Bukowski, I'm coming at him for no reason. All these books have sad women in it. But you're, you know, when you like read a book about women suffering from mental illness and you're like, Oh, a man wrote this. That's how that Murakami book felt. I loved it. I thought the way Murakami writes is really good, but I'm like, this has got men written all over it. Whereas A Year of Magical Thinking is definitely grief and to an extent mental illness, definitely from a woman's perspective. And you can really feel that. And it's really interesting. Like she talks a lot about her resistance to being a wife and their partnership together her and her husband and it's really interesting when men write sad women it's just kind of like be like oh, oh i'm so sad i'm looking out a window and i'm sad and i'm here to teach you about life whereas like when women write sad women they're just like a woman who is sad you know but i do want to finish fucking this Charles Bukowski book. I've saved the truly the book I've been dreading for last, but I'm gonna try and finish it soon. It's poetry, right? So like, how long can it really take me to read it? But she's thick, like, look, like what the fuck, you know? If this font isn't huge, a 300 page poetry collection? Only a man. This has men written all over it. That and this ugly ass fucking cover. Hmm. You know what, I take it back. It was designed by a woman. I've been put in my place, but yeah, I'm gonna read this today. I'm on page 27. We have a poem about a sexual assault. And the next poem is called, after a poem about sexual assault, Poop. Poop. I have finished Harry Styles' favorite books. And I have to share my thoughts really talk about getting inside the head of, you know, America's favorite man. So I've talked a little bit about the books as I've been reading them, but now here are my final thoughts. Oh, just how it went. Three out of the two books were great. One was maybe the worst fucking thing I've ever read in my life. Um, I was gonna put my Goodreads, follow it in the description. I'll tell you like my scores of them, I guess as well. The first book I read was Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. I give this four out of five stars. Now the way that I kind of rate my books on Goodreads is a mix between did I like them and do I think they served their purpose? Because I think sometimes books I hate, but you know, they've done what they've set out to do and it's not their fault that I don't like them. And I will say at first I was like, maybe I'll give it three. I upped it to four because out of all of these books, this one is really kind of stuck with me and I keep thinking about it a lot, but I really loved it. God, there's so many good quotes. The translation is so fucking good. Here's what I will say. <laughs> and I, reading some of the reviews afterwards, I do agree with this. A big contention a lot of people have with this book is that it is, how do I put this lightly, incredibly horny. The, this main character, and this might be, this is like a minor spoiler, he fucks, I think, every girl in this book. Except for one. Yeah, there's four women in this book. He fucks three of them. I'm not gonna tell you which ones. Beautiful prose and very interesting, but, like, horny. So if you don't like a book where the main character is... wants to fuck, this isn't for you. Yeah, and that's it. I think... We're gonna see a trend here as we go through. Harry Styles loves a book about mentally unwell women. And I love that for him and I support it. But we'll also see a trend that, my theory now is that Harry Styles is incredibly horny. And I mean like, I kind of thought he was horny before, but now I know he is because two of these books out of three 
are like maybe two of the most horny books I've read this year. And it's November, you know? Okay, the second book Drink a little more water. is A Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. This was the book I was the most excited about. And it kind of didn't live up to my expectations. But like, I really like Joan Didion. And this, I would say, maybe besides Slouching Towards Bethlehem, is probably her most famous book. I feel like you hear about it a lot and it's really good it's the same thing as Norwegian Wood in that there's like lots of very there's lots of these lines peppered within the rest of the book that just like knock you out and you're just like whoo that's a good line I give it a three out of five stars on Goodreads because I I did enjoy it I definitely think it served its purpose it's just like not a favorite I think it's a good book and then finally, I read fucking Strike of Lightning some shit by Charles Bukowski. And I gave it one star out of five stars. But I wish I could give it zero. I hated this book. It took me about maybe like two hours to read. I read it in one sitting because I could not. I knew if I put the book down, I wouldn't finish it. I knew if I put it down, I would never pick it up again in my life. There was one poem in about a 350 page book that I was like, that's pretty good. Who is this book for? Well, if you fantasize about hitting women or assaulting women, and you just love to kind of go on self-aggrandizing lectures about how much you hate your parents, specifically your dad, this is the book for you. I genuinely think this book should be enough to ban white straight men from poetry forever. I think it should be, I really do. Because in a book of 350 pages, why are there like eight poems about sexual assault? And they're not poems from a women's perspective. No, why would we do that? It's about Bukowski being like, I was playing cards and my friend grabbed the sleeping woman's breast and you're like, Okay, take a shot every time a woman is assaulted and no and nobody learns anything from it <laughs> and then immediately die of alcohol poisoning. I think he must be dead. Oh, he's way dead. He's been dead for a bit. That's good because if he was alive, I would drive to wherever the fuck he lives, Los Angeles, and I would beat the shit out of him. There is a poem in this book where he talks about getting his teeth cleaned at the dentist and how the young dental hy hygienist put her big old tits on him to like tease him. First of all, a thing no one believes really happened. That never happened. Second of all, who is going to tell him women don't have tits to make you horny? You know what I mean? Like, it's not about you, baby. I don't, I think this is a red flag for Harry Styles. I think what this experience has taught me is, first of all, now if I ever like run into Harry Styles at like a cafe and I'm like, I'm like, oh, hey, um, yeah, I can read. And like now I can have like literary conversations with him and impress him, um, which is really why women read. But I think what we've really learned from this experience is Harry Styles is horny, but also horny for sad women with mental illness, which means we have a chance. This was a great time, you know, subscribe, I guess. <laughs>